Shalom, shalom. I need Yehuda Yorra. In other words, peace, peace. Oh, well, you know it's hello, hello. I'm Judah the Shoulder. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over, uh, well, this is actually random. You know what I'm saying? I, I like to turn the camera on and, you know, be random. So uh, we're going to pick a, a random scripture today. We're going to go over, um, of course, dealing with the anti-poly community. As you know, I'm not done. Um, in case you are new to the channel, please like, share, and subscribe. And this is the actual channel here, uh, Judah the Shooter. So uh, as you see my latest video that I did, uh, besides the commercial that I did, uh, I did the uh, A Bishop Must Have One Wife video. Hopefully you all enjoyed that. That was uh, three months ago. Um, but the latest video I did uh, was a little short commercial um, uh, telling you about my book, The Unwritten Rules of Polygyny. Uh, you see the flag in the background, I'm sure you can see polygyny there. Then you have the book, as you see, The Unwritten Rules of Polygyny. The book has been going all over the world, uh, United Arab Emirates. It's been going to the Caribbean islands. Uh, it's been going over Africa. It's been going all over the world. Uh, definitely get your uh, copy at propolybook.com. I even got merchandise. As you see, I got jackets. You can see with the brand on the inside there. You know, um, got shirts, of course. Um, you know, you can see that, shirts. Um different color jackets this is the red one here you know so definitely got different color jackets uh what i do with the other one hold on one second okay so uh here well this one is the uh in honor of the dallas cowboys blue and gray you know see that the blue and gray one i'm not gonna release this one probably until uh around football season for those who like it got the brand on the inside of course uh, you know, got different colors uh, as well. Got the Jordan 13s, baby. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Got that as well. Um, this one probably won't be out uh, until in the future. Um, got the all black ones, of course. Uh, even got the Chucks as well. For those who like the Chucks, you know, definitely got that. Um, cups as well. Propolybook.com. So anyway, now that we got that uh, out of the way, definitely get your free copy. Um, if you go on the site, uh, propolybook.com, real quick. Um, let me see, real quick, propolybook.com. Boom, there you go. Got different merch, stuff like that. You name it. Men and women, they go to jacket, of course. And uh, if you would like the color of the jacket, you can put in the notes what color of the jacket that you actually want as well. Um, Go on to the store, of course. Boom. See the book? You can definitely get that as well. So, yeah, propolybook.com. All right. So now with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. All right. We're going to go ahead and get started. I think I want to go ahead and do, um, we'll do uh, Matthew 19. Now, <clears throat> you may run into brothers or sisters in the streets. Uh, you may run into them on social media, um, maybe a church organization and when you get to talking about poly one of the scriptures they'll bring up is um actually if you did not know uh mark chapter uh 10 and matthew chapter 19 is the same story all right so if they give you the scripture in matthew chapter 10 it's just know and understand it's the same exact story the same exact context in matthew chapter 19 so we really don't have to go over both of them because both of them are the same exact story. Mark gives his account, Matthew gives his account. So um, I guess since I brought up Matthew, we'll bring that up first. <clears throat> Go ahead and switch it to English. Um, usually, you know, for the most part, I, uh, I'll do lessons in the Hebrew language. I'll do it in the Hebrew, uh, I mean, in the English language as well. Uh, this particular lesson, we're definitely gonna do in English today, all right? Yeah, so I'll go ahead and give you a chance to get there. All right. Well, look at me. You see, I didn't got some highlighting up in here. <laughs> All right. So I'll give you a second to get there. All righty. Let me go ahead and switch it to boom. English. All right. So one of the first things I want to point out is that when you bring the topic of poly up, one of the things they'll do is they'll hit you with Matthew 19 and they'll hit you with verse five and six. And I'll read that first. It says, and said, for this cause, a reason shall a man leave father and mother 
and shall cleave or unite to his wife, and a twain shall be one flesh. Um, wherefore, there are no more twain, but one flesh. Wherefore, God have joined together, let no man part asunder. So now what they'll do is they'll take that out of context and try to put it as if, oh, God only ordained to be one man and one woman in the beginning. I mean, in the future, I'm going to be doing a lesson on uh, Genesis 2 and 24, uh, dealing with Adam and Eve. Um, I'm going to save that lesson. Um, so that's coming as well. We're going to be dealing with one flesh, too. Um, so what they'll do is they'll take Matthew chapter uh, 19 and Mark chapter 7. Well, once again, it was the same story. They'll take it out of context. So number one, one thing you explain to them is that Matthew chapter 19, dealing with this, number one, the topic is not even about polygyny, the practice of having more than one wife, adding on another wife or a second wife or a third wife or a fourth wife or a fifth wife. It's not even the topic. The topic was never about polygyny whatsoever. The teachings, as you see here, was strictly about divorce. Divorce. That's what this is talking about. It has nothing to do with polygyny. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get some understanding. Verse 1, it says, And it came to pass that when Jesus, or Yeshua, had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee. And it came into the coast or the island of Judea, or Judah beyond Jordan, verse two, and great multitudes followed him and he healed them there. Now, here we go. The Pharisees also came unto him, here's the key word, tempting him. Let's highlight that. So now we see the Pharisees came unto him and now they're trying to test them. That's what they're trying to do. And saying unto him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Look at this to put away his wife for every cause, meaning every reason. So the question that he's asking him has nothing to do with polygyny. He didn't walk up and ask him, was it lawful for a man to have a second wife? It's not even the topic. So when people are using verse five and six, I look at them like that's irrelevant. Like this has nothing to do with the topic of polygyny as you see that at all. And as I told you, if you've been watching my channel, I've gone over scriptures like 1 Corinthians 7 and 2. Uh, I've gone over um, different anti-poly doctrines that people say um, to try to go against uh, the lifestyle and culture. And as I told you, I'll be going over every single scripture and every single reason, and we're going to debunk each one, one by one. All right. Now, let's go back. As you see, the topic again, the teaching is about what? Divorce. And the Pharisees are what? Tempting him. They're trying to test him. They're trying to catch him up. And saying to him, is it lawful? Keyword. Is it lawful? I'm highlighting that. For a man to put away his wife for every cause. What does cause mean? That means fault, reason. Look at this. For every cause. Let's click on that. Letting us know a cause, that is reason. See that? Crime. See that? So they're asking, once again, is it lawful? Meaning, when he's asking, is it lawful, he's asking about the law. Genesis, Ex Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's what he's asking him about. Now, you and I know that there is nothing in the law that says that you can divorce them for any old thing that never existed. So this is why we've seen that they're trying to test him. Kind of like a person come up and ask you a question to test your knowledge and see what you want, but they want to, they got an agenda behind, they want to catch you up, you know, catch you slipping. That they might can accuse you, of course. So here we go. And he answered and said unto him, have you not read? Keyword that which he made them talking about Adam and Eve. I can't wait to do that lesson uh, in the future. Uh, at the beginning, made them male and female, comma, and said, For this cause or reason shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave or unite to his wife, and they two shall be one flesh. So you see, Yeshua asked them a question. Well, who you know is Jesus asked them a question. So they asked him a question, and he turned around and asked them a question. 
Did you not read about the story of Adam and Eve? Right? When he made them beginning, he made them male and female. That was his question, which was in a response to the question that was asked to him. And remember, the topic is not about Polly. It's strictly about divorce. Divorce only. This is the context of this. It's about divorce. Has nothing to do with in, uh, adding an addition, but this is talking about a subtraction, if anything. Taking away, sending away. So, goes on to say, um, verse 6, Wherefore there are no more two, or twain, but one flesh, or one body, what therefore the most have joined together, let not man part asunder, like let no man divide, all right? The topic, remember, as you see here, is about what? Divorce. Divorce, I like that. It's about divorce. Now let's look at the question that they asked him after he asked them that particular question. Verse 19, I mean, verse seven, it says, they say unto him, who's the they? The Pharisees. They say unto them, why did Moses then command, command, another key word. Let me highlight that. Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement, writing of divorcement, and to put her away? That's the question that they asking him. So this has nothing to do with monogamy only. This has to do with, hold on. Had a call. This has to do with what? Not polygyny. Not adding a wife. More so subtracting. Divorce. That's what this is speaking about. So again, they asked him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and put her away? What are they referring to, guys? They're referring to the law. Remember, they asked him. In verse three, was it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? So they, they asking about specifically the law. Let's go into the law and read about what he described in verse eight. Moses commanding and giving a writing of, a writing of divorcement. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse one, it says, look at this right here, law concerning divorce says, when a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes because he had found some uncleanness in her. Then let him write her, is the command, then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. Verse two, and when she's departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's wife. And if the latter husband hate her, this is the second husband now that she's with, and write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house, or if the latter husband die, which took her to be his wife, her former husband, her first husband, who well, you know she married first, would send her away, the one that had divorced her, may not take her again, may not take her again to be his wife after that she is defiled. For that is abomination before the Most High, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin, which the most high your God have given thee for an inheritance. So they're asking specifically about that law. Let's go back to Matthew 19. And verse 7. Oh, hold up. Sorry about that. Matthew 19. And verse 7. This is the Pharisees. They sound to him, why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and put her away? Why did he do that? Remember, the teaching is not about polygyny, it's about divorce. Again, remember I told you about Mark chapter 10? Look at the same thing right here. This is the same story that they'll try to give you. So sometimes they'll go to Matthew, uh, Matthew 19, or sometimes they'll go to Mark 10. It's the same story. All right? Just like, look, verse 2. And the Pharisees came to him, asking him, is it lawful for a man to put away his wife, tempting him, trying to test him? And he answered and said unto them, what did Moses command you? 
and they said Moses suffered or allowed uh, to uh, write a bill of divorcement to put her away, right? It's the same thing. So when they try to hit you with verse seven and verse eight, all you do is bag it up. Let them know, look, this is about divorce. It ain't about poly. It has nothing to do with that at all. So we'll go back to Matthew 19. Verse eight, he said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts or your minds, suffered you or allowed you to put away or divorce your wives. But from the beginning, meaning during the time of Adam and Eve, it was not so. Adam and Eve never got a divorce. That's not hard to understand. It's not hard to understand. This is not about Polly. Verse 9. And I say unto you that whosoever shall put away divorce his wife, except it be for fornication, and marry, and shall marry another, committed adultery. You can't just divorce your wife at every cause. Remember, that's what the topic is about. We can put away because you don't like the way she cooked eggs. No, the Messiah is saying you don't do that. Then he says, commit adultery. And whosoever married her, which is put away, do commit adultery. Now, why is that? Because remember, going back to chapter three, the question was, is it lawful for a man to just divorce his wife for any reason? So if a brother did that, guess what? And Johnny comes and marry her, that's still adultery. Why? Because lawfully or biblically, the wife is still his. So you go and take that woman and then guess what? She belonged to another man. It's adultery. You wrongfully, um, Johnny wrongfully put her away. You know what I'm saying? So you got to look at the proper context of what's being talked about here. This is talking about divorce. This is not talking about Polly at all. Has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with that. This is literally talking about divorce. Matthew 19 and I look at the word for fornication there. Pull it up. All righty. Matthew 19 and 9, who serves to put away his wife, so will be fornication. Boom. There we go. Pornia. Paulatry. That's prostitution, including adultery and incest in a figurative speech or idolatry, which is the spiritual fornication. You read about these things in Leviticus chapter 18. You also read about these things in Leviticus chapter 20. All right. That's where you read about these things at. Coming down, the Thayer's definition is illicit, which will be forbidden sexual intercourse. Now, where can we find the forbidden sexual intercourse, guys? Leviticus 18, Leviticus 20, Leviticus 19. You'll see it there. All right. Um, uh, yeah, Leviticus 19. Yeah, that's it. Uh, it says adultery, fornication, homosexuality, lesbianism, intercourse with animals, etc. We read about all these things in Leviticus 18. It says sexual course with close relatives. We read about this where? Leviticus 18, sexual intercourse with a divorced man or woman. Now, even though the text never specifically said man, it only talked about woman. For example, in the Mark 10, look, let's go ahead and pull that up. Mark 10, up, oh, hold up, Mark 10, boom, 11 and 12. Remember, it's the same story we just went to. Remember that? Matthew 19, Mark 10, it's the same story. They had put um, Mark 10, 10 to 12. It says in the house, his disciples asked him again of the same matter or situation. And he says to them, whosoever shall put away his wife and shall marry another, committed adultery against her. All right. And if a woman shall put away her husband, all right, she just, oh, Negro, you got me messed up and be married to another. She committed adultery. So just so now we know that in the text, it never said man all right so that's why i wanted to clear that up all right so again we got the key words put away divorce this is a man divorcing his wife right bye i don't need you he wrongfully put her away just for any old reason and he married another he committed adultery against her all right then it says and if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another she committed adultery because we know biblically speaking a woman can't just go and divorce her husband, all right? But that's another topic as well. But I want to bring these things up because now, let me, oh, wait, let me go back and share my screen. Go back and share my screen. Now we know that Mark chapter 10 and then Matthew chapter 19 is specifically speaking of divorce. That's what this is talking about. It has nothing to do with polygyny. Stop letting groups and camps or anybody who are anti-poly Hit you with Matthew 19 
It has nothing to do with you. If you're saying, yo, hey, I want a second wife. Well, I want a third wife. Let's go to Matthew 19. What do we need to go there for? That's irrelevant because the, the context of that story has nothing to do with what I desire to do. It has nothing to do with that. All right. So going back, the word of fornication here, boom, as we hear. All right. So now we know when it says sexual intercourse with a divorced man or, or woman, we know that the text never said that, even though they put this scripture here. It never said that, all right? Only the one man, all right? Metaphorically, the worship of idols, such as uh, if you have the original King James Bible, the wisdom of Solomon, the 14th chapter, uh, Ezekiel chapter 16, we learned that those are definitions or examples of fornication, all right? So we do know and understand that, all right? So as you already know, anything sacrificing to idols, uh, we know and understand it as well, Revelation, the second chapter, all right, you learn about um, when he talked about Jezebel. All right, we read that as well. But going back, Matthew 19, again, the teaching and the topic is strictly about divorce. Divorce. That's what that's talking about. That's what it's talking about. Literally, divorce. All right. So um, let's see. Do I want to deal with another one real quick or do I want to? keep it here um you know what i'm gonna go over this and then i think i'm gonna do a second video on this and i'll cover this again because it's, it's it's more than one thing i want to talk about with this so one of the things i'm gonna bring up i'll just keep it simple all right they'll bring solomon up and they'll say oh well you see solomon had multiple wives and look what happened to him you know um Let's go ahead and deal with that. Let's see in context what was the issue with Solomon. Was the topic, did God get mad at Solomon because he had more than one wife? Was God angry at Solomon because he was practicing what we call today polygyny? Was that the reason why God was upset with him? Well, let's go ahead and see. Turn your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 11. Let's go ahead and see. I'll be doing another video on this in the future because I'm going to go into more depth of that actual story. All right. Um, but I just want to keep this simple. All right. Matthew 19. Um, Matthew 19. Share my screen. Boom. Okay. First Kings 11 and one, it says, but Solomon loved many, what? Strange women. Let's highlight that. That's a key word there. Many strange women, not just women, but strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, that's Egypt. Women of the Moabites, descendants of Moab. Ammonites, descendants of Ammon. Edomites, descendants of Edom. Zidonians, descendants of Zidon, which is a direct descendant of Ham, uh, according to Genesis 10. And Hittites, which is also another direct descendant of Ham. Noah's uh, son. But anyway, he says of the nations or the races of people concerning which the most high said unto the children of Israel, keyword, to the children of Israel, you should not go into them, sex, neither shall they come in unto you, sex, or dealing with marriage with them. He says, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods their deities. Solomon cleave unto these in love. Now here we go, verse three. And he had, cause I'll just read you verse three. He had 700 wives, keyword, princesses, another keyword, and 300 concubines. Now remember I did a lesson on what a concubine is. And uh, for the record, I talk about, uh, I go into depth on what a concubine is in this book as well, all right? So, uh, Pelagesh, Paramore. Um, so, but it goes on to say in verse three, and his wives turned away his heart. His wives. Hmm. Now, remember, just said he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. Said nothing about the concubines, the princesses turning away his heart. It only said wives. Hmm. 
So now we know that the topic already, the issue can't be about policing alone. It has something to do with them strange women that he was uh, married to. That's what it had to do with. But let's see. We're going to read more of the story. It says, for Cain to pass when Solomon was what? Old. That's another key word. He's older in age. That is wise. Said nothing about his concubines. Nothing about them. Just the wise only. Just them. His wise turn away his heart after other gods, not his concubines, not them. No, just the wives, just them, just them. So when people try to say Solomon's wild, I'm like, well, what about his concubines then? What was their problem? Did they do anything wrong or bad according to the scripture? Not that I've ever read. So it says, that they turned away his heart, Laab left after, or his mind after the gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord as God. Look at this. As with the heart of his father, David. Now, wait a minute. Didn't David have more than one wife? Absolutely. I'll be getting to that in the future. Oh, that lesson is coming. David had more than one wife. He had more than one wife. Now, just real quick. When he had finally, and he had more than one wife before he was king. But when he had finally realized uh, that he, you know, became king, he had finally got a house built and all of that. Look at what it said that he did. In verse, uh, I'm going to start here. I'm going to start 11. And Hiram, king of Tyre, sent messages to David and cedar trees and carpenters and masons. And they built David in house. Because remember, if you read chapters 18, of the first time you're 18 through like 25, etc. You know, uh, that's when he was beefing with King Saul, King Saul, who was king at the time, and he was on the run. He was living in like caves and mountains, living in the wilderness, poor, couldn't feed himself, homeless, what you call broke, couldn't feed himself. But yet he had more than one wife. He had children. We'll deal with that in the future, though. That's coming. But I want to uh, specifically point out something that even before he was king and when he was broken, homeless and on the run, he himself even had uh, was practicing poly. All right. So right here. Um, where we at? Where we at? Yeah, here we go. And David perceived or acknowledged or understood that the Lord had established him king over Israel. And he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. Look at this. And he took him more concubines, more concubines, more, key word, and wives out of Jerusalem. After which he had come from Hebron. Because remember, he had like six, six wives in the city of Hebron, which we'll deal with later. All right. I start to go over that now, but now nah, I want to keep I want to keep this a little simple. But it says, and there were yet sons and uh, daughters born to David. See that? It says, and these be the names of those who were born unto him in Jerusalem. Shemua, Shoab, and Nathan, and who? Solomon. That's where Solomon came from. See that? So Solomon, the son of David, this is what it's talking about in 1 Kings 11 and verse 4. For it came to pass when Solomon, who we just got done reading about, was old. That is wise, not his concubine, but his wise turn away his heart after other gods. And that his heart was not what? Perfect with the Lord as God, as was the heart of his, uh, as with the heart of David, his father. Now, wait a minute. First Kings 8 and 61 clearly says, let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord, our God. You know, like David was. But look at this to walk in the statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. Now, 1 Kings 11 and 4 lets us know that Solomon's heart was not perfect with the Lord as God, just like David his father was. David his father who had more than one wife. Now, David did something wrong in the Bible. What was that one thing that David did wrong? 1 Kings 15 is starting one. Now, in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, reigned Abijam, 
over Judah. Three years reign he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Maacah, the daughter of Absalom. And he walked in all of the sins of his father. So you see that his, his heart wasn't uh, perfect with the most high, his Elohim, uh, just like his father wasn't. But it says, which he had done before him. And his heart was what? Not perfect with the most high, his God, as the heart of David, his father. Look at that. Nevertheless, meaning, but for David's sake, for the sake of David, that the most high of the Lord is God gave or uh, give him a lamp in Jerusalem. Remember, this is where Solomon was born to set up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem. Look at this, because David did that which was right. Let's read, let's read that again. Let's read this out loud, y'all. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything. Let's say it again, y'all, out loud. From anything, one more time from anything that he, to my God, commanded him, how long, y'all? All the days of his life. So it's letting you know right there that David did that was, he did what was right in the eyes of the Most High. And he didn't turn aside from anything, anything from what the Most High commanded him, except, I mean, that's what saved me, except only in the matter, I mean, the situation of Uriah the Hittite. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 11, 1 Samuel chapter 12, you know the story of what happened. He took Uriah's wife, put him on front line, got him killed. All right? Took his wife for himself. All right? And that's where Absalom had came in that too, which you learn later. But we'll deal with that topic in the future when we do an in-depth lesson. But I want to show here that David kept the commandments of the most high he did what was right in the eyes of the most high yeah he did and guess what he was considered perfect his mind was perfect with the most highest elohim the most highest god yeah he made a mistake we get that you know the scripture tell you in proverbs 24 16 for a just man follows seven times but he get up again he get up again you know so david made that mistake he got punished for it he got punished for it but the Most High didn't punish him for having more than one wife. Why is that? Why was he angry with David for having more than one wife? What scripture is that? Where can we read that? Nowhere, because it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. So uh, just a little bit, when uh, he, um, the situation where you write a Hittite, Nathan, came and confronted David on this. All right, Nathan was a prophet. I'll show you real quick. Second Samuel chapter 12. All right, this is when Nathan rebukes David. And we're gonna go back to 1 Kings 11 to deal with the Solomon situation. It says, and the Lord sent Nathan unto David. All right, and he came unto him and said unto him. Now, let me go ahead and let you know what Nathan is about to say is a parable, which is the earthly story with a spiritual meaning behind it, all right? Nathan is about to rebuke David or confront David and, and check him because he slept with another man's wife, all right? Now, according to the Bible, that's a sin. That's, that's considered adultery when you sleep with another man's wife. Now, you've already saw the lessons on this already. For example, remember I told you earlier, Leviticus chapter 18, Leviticus chapter 20, it gives the punishments for sexual immorality, doing things that's immoral. The sex crimes, what you know is fornications. So it says, and the man that committed adultery with who? With another man's wife. Key word. Another man's wife. Let me highlight that. Even he that committed adultery with who? His neighbor's wife, the wife of his fellow. All right. The adulterer, which would be that man in this case, and the adulteress, which would be the woman in that case, should surely be put to death. All right. So that's adultery if, uh, or not off. If you lay down with a woman, if the woman that's if you lay down with a married woman, the woman is taken. 
All right, that's why when you see things like Exodus chapter 20 in the Ten Commandments, look at what it says in uh, Exodus 20, my bad, and 17, when it says, thou shalt not cover your neighbor's house. Why? Because that's his. Thou shalt not cover your neighbor's wife. Why? Because she's his. Notice it didn't say, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's husband. Why is that? Why does it mention wife there, but it never mentioned the husband? It mentioned the woman, but didn't mention the man. Hmm. Then it say, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant. So you mean to tell me it go on to mention a, a manservant and a maidservant, but it didn't mention husband or wife? Hmm. It just says wife. Why? Because we see in Leviticus 20 and 10 why. If you lay down with a married woman, that's adultery. The woman is taken. The woman is married. So it's nor his ox, nor his ass, meaning donkey. It even mentioned a donkey, but it didn't mention husband in this verse. I wonder why. Nor anything that is what? Your neighbors. Even in the Hebrew text for my Hebrew readers. Look at this, because I even put this in the book. It says, lo tachmod bet re'eka, lo tachmod eshet re'eka, va'avdu. Va'amato, v'shomoro, v'chomoro, v'chor asher le're'eka. Never mentioned the husband there, but it mentioned the wife. Look at that. Look at this. Lo takmo bet re'eka. You should uh you should not cover your neighbor's house. Lo takmo eshet re'eka. Don't cover your neighbor's wife. Look at this. Va'amdu. That's the root word aver, which is a servant. For I do know his servant, slave. Look at this, Va'amatu. Look at that. That's his female servant. Look at that. So it never mentioned husband in the text whatsoever. So now that we know that, let's go back to uh, again to 2 Samuel 12. Verse 1, it says, let me write this down so I don't forget. We're going back to 1 Kings. All right. So it says, and the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, there were two men in one city. It's talking, and now I'm going to go ahead and give the, spill the beans, a spoiler alert. Nathan has already talked, those two men he's talking about, David and Uriah. Now, again, if you've read chapter 11, you read about the story of David and Bathsheba. This was Uriah's wife. All right. Chapter later, Nathan goes rebuke him. So it says, the rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds. All right. Now keep in mind, David at this time had more than one wife. More than one wife. One example, I guess I got to give it away. Um, 2 Samuel um, um, chapter 5, we had already read. Um, about um, how he uh, took him more wives and concubines, right? But we're in chapter 12, right? But then you got 1 Samuel uh, chapter, uh, is it 6, 3? Hold on, wait, 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 what is that? Uh, I think I'm getting that wrong. Oh, yeah, 2 Samuel 3, I'm tripping. Yeah, that's where you read about David and his wives and whatnot, all right? So in chapter 3, we read about his wives here, right? Several with children, all right? Chapter five, we read where he took more wives and he took more concubines. Chapter 12, we read about David. He's about to get rebuked by Nathan the prophet. Why didn't Nathan get on him about having more than one woman? Why didn't God send a prophet to him to get on him then? When he was taking all these wives, why didn't he do that then? You think that he's done that, but the moment he do something wrong, commit a crime, Guess what? Prophet can't holler at him. So he says, but the poor man had nothing, save meaning except one little ewe lamb. Now he's not talking about a physical lamb. He's talking about Bathsheba, the wife. Says, what she had brought and nourished up. And it grew together with him and with his children and did eat of his own meat <laughs> and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and, and was unto him as a daughter. But there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spread not to take of his own flock and of his own herd, to dress the wayfaring man, 
that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb. Because remember, David just took dude's wife. Look at that. And dressed it for the man that was come to him. So now he's telling him the story, not knowing that he's talking in a parable or what you would say talking in circles. Negro, he's talking about you. He just, Nathan just ain't told him yet. David about to get mad, not knowing, Nero, you are the person we talking about. You the one that did this. You didn't take a physical lamb, but you took somebody's wife. You did the same thing. And you about to get mad, David? So it says, and David's anger was greatly kindled against the man and said to Nathan, as the Lord living, the man that has done this thing shall surely die. Wait a minute, David, you not even know him, bro. You talking about yourself. Nathan about to get on you, though. He about to check you and let you know you are the man. You the one I'm talking about. Let me tell you what the God of Israel said, though. Since we're talking about you, you took another man's wife. That's what this is about. The Most High didn't get mad at him for having more than one wife. He got mad because he took somebody else's wife. He was in violation of Exodus 20 and 14. Exodus 20 and 17 as well. Don't commit adultery, right? Don't cover another man's wife. Look at this. Which also reminds me when you look at, um, cause I'm gonna do another in-depth lesson on this in the future. Matthew 5, uh, 27 and 28. When it says, um, you have heard that it was said by the time of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh upon the woman, key words, a lust out there to commit adultery already in his heart. Look at this. In Greek, it's the word une, which was talking specifically a wife. But get this. When you look in the extra Hebrew New Testament, that is right here. Isha, talking about a wife. But I'll deal with that in the future, though. That lesson is definitely coming. All right. Because um, it's wildly misunderstood. Even in those who you love their concordance, uh, when you see the word woman here, it's the word une, as I just told you. Une. Look at this. A woman, but it's specifying what? A wife. Yeah, a wife is a woman, but he's, ta uh, he's talking specifically about an actual wife. But we'll do that lesson in the future, but you see it's in the Hebrew text, too. We'll do that in the future, too, though, because I want to slowly go over a lot of these things. Uh, but anyway, going back to 2 Samuel, chapter 12 again. All right? 2 Samuel 12 again. Verse five, and David's anger was greatly kindled against the man and said unto Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that has done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he, dug, uh, because he did this thing and because he had no pity, he didn't even spare him. And Nathan said to David, you are the man. You are the one, I'm, you're the one I'm talking about. Let me tell you what God said though. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel and I delivered you out of the hand of Saul. Because remember, he was on a run from Saul. All right, read first Kings, I'm sorry, first Samuel chapter 18 through uh, at least 25. You read the story, all right? So he says, and I gave you your master's house, talking about who? Saul, and your master's wives, plural, into your bosom. And I gave you your master's wives. This is what God said into your bosom and gave you the family of the house of Israel and of Judah, the northern southern kingdom. And he said, and if that had been too little, meaning, and if that wasn't enough, your master's house, your master's wives into your possession or bosom, says, I would have moreover have given unto these such and such things. I would have given you more. All you do is ask, David. I would have given you more. Right here. He says, look at right here in the good news version. I gave you his, let me go right here. Uh, he says, you are the man, Nathan said to David. And this is what the Lord God of Israel said. I made you king of Israel and rescued you from Saul. I gave you his kingdom and his wives. And his wives, I gave them to you. I made you king of Israel and Judah. And if this had not been enough, what'd he say? I would have given you twice as much. I would have given you more. Hmm. Obviously, the most high God didn't have an issue with Polly then. 
because David at this point already had wives and he had concubines. Even before he was king and he was on the run and had children by them. And the Most High was still with David. The Most High is still with David. So for example, uh, Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach, chapter 11, verse uh, 21, says, marvel not at the works of sinners, but trust in the Most High and abide in your labor. Look at this. For it is an easy thing in the sight of the Lord or in the eyes of the Lord on the sudden to make a poor man rich. You don't know what he going to do. You just keep doing what you do. Abide in your labor. Keep the faith. Keep them commandments. And the Most High will bring you up overnight. It bring you up overnight. All right. So we're going back to 2 Samuel chapter 12. Right there. He let him know he would have given him more. He would have given him more. Verse 9, it says, What for hast thou despised the commandment of the Most High to do evil in the sight? What did he do, y'all? Here we go. Thou hast killed Uriah with the sword and hast taken his wife to be your wife and have slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, why didn't he tell him you took his wife and then you had other wives? Because that wasn't a problem. The Most High don't have a problem if you decide that you want to take another wife. The Most High don't command you to take another wife. Just like he don't command you to do monogamy. Yes, he do. Genesis 2.24. I will Paul didn't have no wife. Was it you saying he in sin? Huh? There were men in the Bible that did not have wives. Are you saying that they broke that law? Ah, oh, you bet not. But we'll deal with that topic later, though. But anyway, he says here. Now, therefore, the sword will never depart from your house, many family, because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah to hit I to be your wife. Thus said the Lord, behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of your own house. And I will look at this. I will take what? Your wives. Now, wait a minute. Why? So you seeing right here, he didn't even check him on having wives in the first place. He said, I'm going to take your wives. So God is acknowledging that those women, plural, were all of his wives. And the only reason why he's taking his wife is because he took another man's wife to be his wife. And that's adultery. So here it is. He says, and I will take your wives before your eyes. And what, what is he going to do? And give them unto your neighbor. Wait a minute. So God obviously is still okay with polygyny. Why would he give them to his neighbor then? He didn't say neighbors. He said, I would give them to your neighbor. And they say, and he shall lie with who? With your wives in the sight of this son. And that's the topic we're going to go over later, though. Look at that. It says, for thou hast did it secretly, but I would do this thing before all Israel and before the son. And David said to Nathan, Nathan, look, he ain't making an excuse. I have sinned before the most high. And David said to David, the Lord have also have put away your sin. Thou shalt not die. So you see, he spared him. He spared him. Hold it down, y'all. The wise are not joking. So how be it? Because by this deed, meaning what you did, Thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Most High to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto you shall surely die. So right here, if the Most High had a problem with Polly, why did he say, I gave you your master's house and your master's wives? And if that weren't enough, I would have given you more. But because you lay down with another man's wife, you know what I'm going to do, bro? I'm going to take your wives away from you and I'm going to give them to your fellow and he gonna lay with all your wives. But I'm going, since you did this in secret, I'm gonna do this before all Israel. You would think that if the most I had a problem with Polly, that would have been the perfect time to let him know, Negro, you only supposed to have one wife. Adam had one wife. Not wise. Hmm. You look at that. Now remember we read here, in 1 Kings 11, 
verse 4 and 5, uh, my bad, 1 Kings 15, it says, verse 4 and 5, nevertheless, for David's sake did the Lord, his God, give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up his son after him and to establish Jerusalem. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that God commanded him or he commanded him all the days of his life, except only in the situation of Uriah the Hittite. That was a man that was poly, had more than one wife. Hmm. First Kings 11 and 4. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart, not his concubines. Not as princesses, but wives. It says, and remember, these were strange women, strange wives. It says his heart was not what? Perfect with the Lord as God, as was the heart of his father David, the same David that had more than one wife. Hmm. It says, for Solomon went after Ishtar or Estoreth, the god of the, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of Ammon or the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Most High and went not fully after the Lord, just like David, his father, did, in other words, as his father, David, the same David that had more than one wife. Hmm. The Lord, I'm sorry, I apologize. Then Solomon built, built in high place, a shrine, in other words, for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, because remember, he had Moabite stuff. In the hill that is before Jerusalem, meaning right when you come in into the city, you can see a shrine built up. Then he say, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Did we read up in verse one? He loved the strange women and one of them were the Ammonites. Yeah, we surely did. Then he says, and likewise, meaning just like, did he for who? Uh, not all his wives, but who? All his strange wives. Don't that sound like verse one? So the problem again is not polygyny. The, the problem is the strange wise that he took. He ain't said nothing about the concubines though, right? And he had 300 of them. Said nothing about them. It says, which, uh, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. So you see the problem is not about polygyny. It's about specifically spiritual fornication, idolatry. And he took strange wives. That's the problem. Right here, verse 9. And the most high, the Lord was angry with Solomon. Why was he angry with Solomon? Let me highlight that. It said the Lord was angry with Solomon because he took more than one wife. Oh, sorry. Didn't say that. It said the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart, meaning his mind, was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which appeared unto him twice. And he commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods. Look at this. He said nothing about more than one wife. It said he shouldn't go after other gods, but he kept not that which the Lord commanded. What the Lord commanded, y'all, we just read it. That he should not go after other gods. And we see he did not keep that. He did not keep that. It says, what for the Lord said to Solomon, for as much as this is done <clears throat> of thee, thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I commanded thee, I've commanded thee, I will surely rend or strip or rip the kingdom from you, and it will be given to your servant. Notwithstanding in your days, I will not do it for David, your father's sake. So just because of who your daddy is, I'm going to spare you. He said, but he going to tear it out of your son's hand, in other words, right there. David, the same David who had more than one wife. Why didn't he strip the kingdom from David then for having more than one wife? Hmm. Says, how be, meaning, however, I will not rend or tear away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe unto your son for who? For David, my servant's sake. Look at that. God's servant had more than one wife. Look at that. And for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. Now, remember, according to verse 36, he tell you here. And unto his son will I give one tribe that David, my servant, the polygynous man, have a light always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen. What? 
me to put my name there. He put his authority there. So the Most High never had an issue with David, whose heart was perfect. Huh? Christ had a heart after David as well. David was a righteous man. And the only thing he did wrong is what we read in 1 Kings chapter 15, verse 4 and 5. The same David had more than one wife. Hmm. Somebody has been misunderstanding a lot of scriptures there. Somebody's been doing it. And a lot of the things that we talked about, I'm actually going to do another lesson. We're going to go more in depth on this as well. But there are scriptures that people take out of context. As you already know, we've already dealt with 1 Corinthians 7 and 2. We've dealt with that, what it says, nevertheless, for fornication, let every man have his own wife. They won't have her own husband. We go and deal with that in context, what that actually meant versus what is actually being said today. Yeah. We know. We just dealt with the Matthew 19. Mark 7 was paints the same picture. I decided to go ahead and deal with Solomon because, you know, people will always try to bring up Solomon. Yes, they do. You know what I'm saying? So uh, in the future, we're going to be dealing with Abraham. We're going to be, uh, we've already dealt with uh, uh, the, do the doctrine that teaches that, oh, well, uh, if you have more than one wife, they can't live in the same house and each wife got to have their own tent. I've dealt with that already. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, I dealt with that. That's on this channel. Um, the YouTube.com slash Judah the Shooter. That's on this channel already. We've already dealt with uh, the Exodus 21. Um, uh, I did two videos on that, actually. The first Timothy 5 and 8 myth. We've dealt with that already. For those who like to use first Timothy 5 and 8, I did the whole chapter on that as well. I might turn around and do that in Hebrew, too. Yeah, I might do that. Uh, as you see, I did the Exodus 21 here. And uh, where is it? Uh, the other way. Here it is right here again. We dealt with the laws of the land. You got to follow the laws of the land. Now, brothers um, who are in the community, stop using the word polygamy. Polygamy is an incorrect term. Yeah, polygamy is a sin. Polygamy is against the laws of the land, if you will. But there's a difference between polygamy and polygyny. If you don't know the difference, you already might as well just not. Just stop. <laughs> stop. You know, but again, I got the book, The Unwritten Rules of Polygyny. The book is for everybody, whether you're in the community or not. Uh, the book, is, no matter who you are, what your color is, you can definitely get the book. Um, even if you don't want to practice the lifestyle and culture, the book is for you as well. You know what I'm saying? Because it clears up a lot of the misconceptions about things as well. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you don't want, you're the type of brother that likes to lie, sneak, and cheat, and, and hide, and you want to sneak around, uh, this book going to expose you, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, you abusive um, to your wives, a you know, book gonna expose you. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of brothers is, is doing this. Man, y'all can pick a better way, man. You know what I'm saying? Stop lying and manipulating these sisters. You know what I'm saying? Um, do I want to give you all a uh, sneak peek? Let me think. Um... Let me think. Do I want to give you all a sneak peek? Mm, yeah, I'll give you a little bit. Good old sneak peek on what I was talking about. All right, a little sneak peek. Unwritten rule number five. All right, and the reason why, well, one reason why I call it unwritten rules because there's things that are specifically in the Bible. We know that it talks about poly and things like that, but there are unwritten rules, things that are not written that actually could help you in today's time. All right, so unwritten rule number five. Uh, it's called drama in the household backlash for robbing her of her choice. So brother, you've lied to this woman. You know what I'm saying? You took another wife and you're like, dang, you ain't even talked to me about it. And I didn't even know you wanted to be poly. You know what I'm saying? I thought that we was going to do the monogamy thing. You know what I'm saying? And you knew that, you knew that you want another wife, but then you're going to lie. You know what I'm saying? And manipulate the situation. Yeah, let's talk about that. Brothers, the last thing you want to do is make a woman feel like you've embarrassed her and made her feel low. You know, so understand that sisters have feelings as well as us, brothers. It's called empathy. Look up the word empathy. So it says, 
Did you know by you lying, sneaking around and hiding the fact that you want to be polygynous? You want to hide that, brother? It says, uh, you're putting your household at risk and could lose a lot. Like, do you know that? You know you could lose a lot by that, bro? You knew you wanted to be poly, bro. Why are you lying? Why are you waste this girl time to go find a sister that is okay with it? She's okay with living the lifestyle and culture. So even if you finally tell her the truth after you're busted, it's still a risk. You know how some brothers be. Oh, well, I, well, well, yeah, you know, I, I, I do want poly. Now that you've busted. Well, why didn't you say that up front before you married this woman? Before y'all got, at least before y'all got serious, before y'all decided that y'all was in love, at least bro, I met him before that. Now you want to tell her after you done broke her heart and she's busted now? I mean, that, that you busted now? Come on, bro. Look at what you're doing, bro. That's a little messy, don't you think? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, now that you have embarrassed her, she now has to explain to her family, friends, co-workers, and anyone else she holds near and dear to her that a knight in shining armor she once had isn't the man of her dreams. Now, why do you think that is, brother? Because she only wanted it just to be y'all. She didn't sign up for all of that. All right. So here we go. It says she had a vision of that man who only wanted her. Now she feels like that was snatched from her. Why do you think she feels like that? Because you robbed her of her choice. You didn't give her the decision to decide if this is something that she wanted to partake in. Yes, we know a wife is supposed to submit to a husband, bro. You ain't even tell her up front before she was even a wife. So anyway, I say you are the one responsible for this. So at brothers, at some point, we got to be held accountable as well. It says, and now many emotions are coming behind this over the next few days, weeks, or even months. And that's assuming that she's still around because you know, brothers, you know, she probably going to be in her feelings, probably going to be sad, going to be crying, moping around and all of that. Well, bro, you did it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. It says, now that you have embarrassed her, you now have ruined the trust circle. Now more damage is done, more backlash will come such as her mouth. Yes, man, we don't like to hear a woman's mouth, but rob her of a choice on taking a second wife that she knew nothing about would definitely get her mouth going. You know what I'm saying? So um, let's see, what else do I want to see a snippet on? Um, I think I want to mention this as well. All right. It says, uh, many men and women desire polygyny, and it is a lifestyle. However, many people are not aware of some of the pros and cons of the polygyny lifestyle. So if you're looking to practice this lifestyle, it's many aspects. There are some things you should consider before signing on that poly dotted line before you decide like okay cool i want to go ahead and do this i want to do what you and i'm doing his wives you know and um if you're new to the channel me and my wives we do have our own youtube channel as well you know what i'm saying you get the book propolybook.com and you can find out where the youtube channel is if you don't know but anyway uh it says to the men you will find some of the unwritten rules of engaging in this lifestyle you will learn why you can't catch a break and why there's so much drama in your life surrounding polygyny like damn i just can't cut a break i can't find the right dynamics and you know i just keep running to all this kind of drama yeah, you'll find out why so it says you desire polygyny but for some strange reason you can't bring everything together like it's like man it's, it's like you got the peanut butter but no jelly right so it says and you may not realize it. There are common mistakes men make when it comes to polygyny. No, we, I talk about those things. A lot of mistakes you brothers is doing, but it's good that you can accept this correction. Don't be hiding this book from your wives. Yeah, y'all been doing that. I know, I've been hearing. Uh, and it says, and this book is now your breakthrough. You know what I'm saying? So now, you know, you get to get the reality check, you know, and learn from the mistakes. But again, this book is not just for people who wants to live the lifestyle. It's for people who don't even have a desire of it. All right, you get to learn from the perspective of 
righteousness, if you will, um, fairness, empathy across the board, if you will. Because a lot of people in the Hebrew community is, is ugh, they're giving it a bad name. You know, they're making mistakes and they're not correcting them. All right, it's okay to make mistakes on all ends, but what you do after you make these mistakes? I've made mistakes, lots of them. Talk about it. I'm gonna talk about it in book two as well. All right, but it's what you do after that. What do you do after you fall when you get back up? Huh? But anyway, I said, brothers, do you hit your woman? Be real, brother. You do that? I said, if so, don't purchase this book because after your spouse reads it, she may hate you afterwards. Ooh, well, do you like to lie and sneak around on your woman? You like to do that, bro? Huh? Let us see your phone, your text messages. Let us see your inboxes. Where you be going? Huh? Yeah, you be sneaking. Yeah, we know. <laughs> um, do you like to lie and sneak around on your woman? Meanwhile, you know, she thinking you, I um, mean, you monogamous, brother? Huh? If so, you shouldn't purchase this book because some of the things may offend you. If you still don't understand the polygyny concept after reading this book, you would never be successful in, poly, in, a poly, in your poly union. If you're currently in a poly union and wish to keep it strong, you might say, man, I got my wives. Yeah, but your household still may be in turmoil. Is your wives a unit? You know, do, or do they get along like sisters? Or they fighting and arguing and bickering and nitpicking at one another and catty, you know, jealous, you know, envious, you know, or they always bumping heads. So you want to get this book then, brother. Your house ain't in order. You know, while you teaching other brothers about poly, your house ain't in order. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it says then this book would be the key to a successful union. So if you want to use it as a tool and a guide, this will most definitely help you. So it says, no matter how long you have been in your union. So you may say, man, I've been having my wife for 10 years or 20 years. My wife's for 10 and 20 years and 30 years. And hey, this book still gonna help you. So it says, to my ladies, if you are currently seeing a man that you can picture yourself starting a family with, then you will want him to, uh, to read this book. If you know of a man who can't seem to stop seeing multiple women at once, hmm, then you will want to provide him with the book as well, with this book as well. Or are you noticing patterns in the men that you date, ladies? Huh? It says um, that cause them to want to cheat on you. Do you want to know the secrets to men's desires of having multiple women? You want to know why? This book is for you. If you can't seem to find the perfect family to share a husband with, but there's sisters out there that generally want to be in a poly union. You know what I'm saying? Some may say, well, I want to be the first wife or I want to join a poly family, but I want to be a righteous family. There are all sisters out there that's like that. Sisters, if that's you, get this book. Get the book. This is going to help. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, and that says, um, if you can't seem to find a perfect family to share a husband with, or you seem to run in the dead end every time you are looking to find the right poly family, then you're in for a treat. Whether you are practicing poly or whether you are a believer or not in the Bible or poly. So whether you're practicing poly, whether you believe in the Bible or not, or whether you believe in poly or whether you don't believe in poly is what I'm saying. This is a book that you don't want to pass up. So I says, if you have children, you may want to have this from now because I say some things in here that might not be suitable for children. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I said, by the way, ladies, have you told your husband about the secret of who Ron John is? If not, he's about to find out about it and also learn why you have been so stubborn. The cat will be out of the bag in this book. And I advise you to hide this book from him if you are thinking about another man. We, you will be, you will be exposed. Men, if you don't know who Ron John is, get this book. 
and you will find out exactly who Ron John is. Trust me, your woman know who he is. Your woman know who he is. We, we, with old Ron John. I don't want to give it away, but brothers, let's just say if you are weak in the bedroom, you got weak dick, and your wife is always at your throat, complaining, and you raising your voice. Yeah, you want to you want to learn who Ron John is and get this book because I revealed some stuff in there. Yeah, might hurt your feelings, but hey, somebody got to tell you, brother. I'm gonna tell you what probably most of the elders ain't gonna tell you. But I said to both men and women, do you have secrets you don't wish to tell your spouse? Any secrets? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Be careful. This book will be a roller coaster ride. You never know which way it will turn. Like, I mean, I could be talking about green one minute, and in the same sentence, I'm talking about blue. You know, so you ain't gonna be able to anticipate what's coming. <laughs> for real so if you got something to hide and you ain't right and you your brothers you trying to uh trying to sneak around and manipulate yourself into this poly stuff this poly lifestyle and culture uh sisters you got an agenda hey, this book might gonna have y'all arguing you know who we brothers if y'all if you oh I ain't, I ain't gonna say too much but yeah yeah um, let's see what else I want to say. Yeah, be careful. This book will be a roller coaster ride. You never know which way it'll turn. I will reveal secrets from men and women, and trust me, you may get caught up because I will be snitching. We oui. this book is not for people who wish to play games. Polly is not a phase and shouldn't be categorized as one. This book will not sit right with your spirit if you don't like to hear what's real. If you are super religious. This book isn't for you. Look, guys, disclaimer, this is not a Hebrew Israelite book. All right. Although I talk about it a little bit in here. Why? Because it's a part of my lifestyle and culture. Not a Hebrew Israelite book. Yeah, you see them women with their fringes on and man with his on, but hey, you see him with the high life symbol around his shirt, but not a Hebrew Israelite book. So, you know, it's no matter what group or you are, what camp you with a doctrine that you subscribe to, you know, this won't affect, you know, you reading the book. So no matter who you are, what camp you are, you actually can't get the book because there's no doctrine being discussed, if you will. You know, even if you were groups like IUIC, who teaches against this? You know what I'm saying? No, GOCC teaches against it. You can actually still get the book. There's good information in there. So anyway, I say, uh, but yeah, if you a uh, super brew, this ain't going to be the book for you. You know what I'm saying? Because I got funny things in here, spiritual things in here, and I got some real nigga shit in here too. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if that intimidates you, you might not want to read that shit. I'm just going to be honest with you, bro. But anyway, I said, um, yeah. Don't give this book to your grandmother. Because she has spilled a coffee on the book and possibly herself from what would be revealed. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah. Pass this book on to your friends, co-workers, colleagues, family, significant others, and whoever else you think would be interested in learning about religion and its lifestyle. So have a seat. Make sure there are no distractions and strap up for this raw, uncut truth you're about to receive. Ladies and gentlemen, class is in session. Welcome to the book. Welcome to book one of the unwritten rules of polygyny. In the back of the book, I let you know, warning, you're never gonna be the same after reading this entire book. If you're reading this book, no matter if you are against polygyny, in other words, or if you are in favor of poly, like myself, there's something in this book for everyone and everyone is gonna learn how to tell secrets that's hidden from the public outside of poly. I want to give you secrets on the pros and cons of the lifestyle and culture and reveal inside secrets on poly and how you can either obtain polygyny in today's time or you may find out how you may not be ready for poly in today's time is basically what I'm saying. I thought I was ready. This book showed me I ain't ready yet. You know, so brothers have read them like, yo, I ain't ready for poly. I thought I was. And so I'm ready like, yo, I'm ready, man. Everything you said in here, I feel this way. So anyway, I said, there are things about Polly that people don't talk about. 
And this is where volume one of the book comes in. Before you sign on that poly dotted line, before you sign your life away on this, brother, and say, oh, I want to do it. Before you sign on that poly dotted line, read this book because I'm going to reveal the unwritten rules or principles to polygyny, even if you don't want to practice polygyny. Even if you don't want to practice polygyny, get the book. You got a man that said, baby, I only want you. Get the book anyway. Give it to him anyway. Brothers, if you got a group or a camp organization out there and you ain't living the lifestyle and culture, no matter who you are, what you're doing, if you ain't successful at it and people don't know you for being successful at it, stop teaching on a topic that you ain't even qualified to even teach on. And you, you ain't even living the lifestyle. You desire it, but you ain't living the lifestyle. You ain't successful at it. You know what I'm saying? That don't mean you ain't going to be uh, successful at it tomorrow. Stop teaching on it. It's not your lane. It's not. It's just not, bro. You know what I'm saying? So before you do a disservice, you know what I'm saying, because you ain't leading by example, man, send them the book. I do know people saying like, yo, look, hey, I ain't really live a lifestyle. Yeah, I read about in the Bible. I know things about it. I know some people who are poly, but I ain't living that lifestyle. If I am, I ain't successful with it. So anybody who want to come and join our uh, group and organization, if they decide that they want to do that man or woman, they got to get this book. They got to get this book. They got to get this book before they decide fully if this is what they really want to do. You know what I'm saying? And if brothers, if you wise, you would do that. Why? Because this book is saving lives. I'm getting too many, too many, too many reviews, even from a lot, lots of women who are anti-poly. I'm like, yo, wow. Either I want to try this or man, I'm going to get this book to such and such. I'm going to tell somebody else about this book or you cleared up a lot of rumors. I thought police were just about threesomes and orgies. I see, Judah, you don't even do that. You don't even agree with that. I never knew that. You know, get the book, get the book, get the book. You might want to get it before the price is raised. All right, so I've been keeping it affordable. Um, of course, it's going to still be affordable, but the price will raise. You know, you will pay what I am worth. All right, that book is worth hundreds of dollars, might I add, you know. Brother just told me the other day, man, I would have paid 150 for this book, knowing what's in it, you know? So I know what's in it, it's timeless. You can pick this book up 20 years later and it's still gonna be relevant, all right? It'll soon be like that book from Babylon to book two, you know? So the unwritten rules of polygyny, definitely get this book, even if you don't agree with polygyny, even if you wanna practice it. If you know somebody that talks about it, if you know a man who'll be saying, oh, I don't really want it, but you see he got more than one woman, he'd be cheating on his woman and sneaking around on her, making babies on the other side of town, give him this book. Give him this book. And if you are in a polydynamic or if you're thinking about doing it, all y'all need to have a book. Trust me, because people have been hiding it from their spouse. And I know why. You know, somebody told me earlier, man, it remind me of uh, women who was hiding the, uh, what's the name of the book Steve Harvey did? Uh, Think Like a Man, I want to say. They were hiding it from their men. They say, man, people would, it's going to be just like this and that. Definitely get the book. Definitely get the book. Definitely get the book. Um, if anybody need counsel or anything like that, you can only book it through the site and you're not getting counsel. If you and your significant others or other or anybody who you who we counseling about, they got to have a book as well. They got to have a book as well. You know what I'm saying? So I got some uh, special things coming. I ain't going to reveal everything yet, but uh, no one understand that brothers, um, uh, pollution is a lifestyle and culture is not a phase. Um, definitely do right by your spouses, you know what I'm saying? Or spouse. Don't, don't hide it. Don't sneak around. Them, you know, don't do that. You know, be fair in this. You know what I'm saying? So we as brothers are held to a higher standard. We're held to a higher standard, bro. So we got to lead by example. Um, also, if your credit, if you got bad credit, bro, if your credit is horrible or your wife or wife's credit is horrible, man, reach out to me, reach out to me. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you want to be in the 800 club? Huh? You want to be that over 800s? You want to be able to drive off that car lot, get whatever it is that you want or deserve or at a house you may be desiring or whatever it is you want to do with that credit. You want to learn how to turn credit into money and all of that? Yeah. You can make that happen, bro. You can make that happen. You can definitely make that happen. 
You know what I'm saying? So definitely reach out. Um, the fastest way now to reach me now is through the site or uh, propolybook.com. Definitely get to get the book or whatnot. Uh, you put notes in the uh, thing. We'll see it. We'll definitely see it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm only dealing now with people who are serious. You know what I'm saying? Rehand picking a circle. And if you're friends with me on social media, I have to let you know. It's a disclaimer. Um, some of you may look on my social media. You might be removed or deleted. All right. It's not because I don't deal with you. I don't mess with you. I may hate you or things like that. It's only simply because it's now a closed circle to those who have the book. So anybody who don't have the book automatically will be removed. All right. Automatically will be removed. Why? Because I'm turning that basically to a closed circle of like-minded individuals, basically. All right. It doesn't matter how long I've known you. It doesn't matter. All right. So, um, yeah. So if you see that you remove, you actually know why. You know, it's nothing personal. It's just business. All right. Um, and I will be changing my number as well. So um, that's another topic as well. Phone number will be changed also. All right. So that's basically what I want to deal with. Uh, my wives, they're going to be doing another video as well. You already know how to find them. If you don't get the book and find out, you better hurry up and get it before uh, the price goes up. Uh, if you have more than one wife or more than one potential wife, or if you know that you want to be poly, go ahead and get the books now. And in my opinion, if you can't even afford to get this book, bro, or you can't, or should I say, if you can't invest in this book, you already ain't ready. It's already not for you because this book is going to save your life. You know what I'm saying? So um, I'm Judah the Shooter. You can hit me up at youtube.com slash Judah the Shooter. Once again, to get the book, it's at propolybook.com. You can definitely, um, oh, and another thing, um, um, you can definitely get the book here on the store. We got merchandise as well. If you wanna get your credit together, that's how you can reach right there. Get your credit together. Um, and if you give them, uh, if you give uh, 244, you get a discount. Um, you know, you get deals, you know what I'm saying? So. Uh, once again, propolybook.com. Um, but there are things on here that only members can see. So you have to sign up, get your membership, sign up, click on sign up. All right. And once you do, there's a $10 a month, a $25, and a $110 a month. I mean, I'm sorry, one, uh, uh, $110 a year. I'm sorry, for the year. I apologize. Uh, and I got some special things coming only for people who are actually on the site. So if you trying to reach me and things like that, um, pretty soon all of the videos is going to be on that site. Um, the House of Judah, you know what I'm saying? My family going to be on that site. So you be like, dang, where they been? They ain't made no videos or nothing. Yeah, because we gone. That's where we at. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be closed circle invite only. You know what I'm saying? We don't care who you are. Well, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what faith you practice or whatnot, as long as you're respectful what it is that we teach and believe and you ain't coming to debate and argue, you're not coming with a negative spirit, any negative thing like that, you, you got to go. You got to go without warning, without warning. You get into it with people in our circle, our guests, you got to go without warning. You got to go without warning. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because we're going to keep it a peaceful environment. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, um, again, the unwritten rules of polygyny, brothers, stop lying, stop sneaking beating on your wives and all of that, manipulating the situation. So it's the same thing. Submit to your husband. 